We've got Steve Merrill from Wager Talk on the line for his weekly check-in to cover the largest games in the college football season. We've run through the regular season, and Steve's an incredible 12-1 and one against the spread in his exclusive picks that we provide on Patreon, his under-the-radar selections. And also, Steve uh, runs down all the games for our team channels. So we've got the Las Vegas Bowl, Steve, where we've got Oregon State taking on Florida SEC and Pac-12 matchup. Uh, we don't know what kind of personnel is going to show up to this game for the Florida Gators, but we know that Anthony Richardson has uh, taken his services to the NFL draft. So it kind of highlights uh, as being the first uh, matchup of major conference teams, uh, all the uncertainties that are uh, for us to try to decipher during postseason play in college football. Yeah, I mean, first of all, kind of give a, a 101 on bowl handicapping because we're going to do a lot of the team channel bowl games and most of the big team channels obviously are playing later, you know, late December and into January. But this is on that initial Saturday, December the 17th. So might very well be the first bowl game a lot of people look into. And, you know, you have to tread lightly in the bowls. Uh, the analogy I would use, Mark, is kind of like handicapping the NFL preseason. You know, you don't necessarily look at the numbers from the regular season here it's the post college football postseason is like handicapping the nfl preseason i guess would be a good way to put it because it's about player personnel you know especially the quarterback spot the skill spots like you said running back um you want to make sure you're going to have guys out there but the reason i really say it's like the nfl preseason isn't necessarily that reason because sometimes these backups these guys are going to be starters next year at these power schools like florida and oregon state you know they can step up and play well sometimes they play better it's about motivation from the team as a whole and that comes into play when you're traveling, say, to Las Vegas, Nevada. There could be some distractions in Las Vegas, to say the least. Um, Oregon State, a little bit more comfortable going there. In fact, back in 2008, I watched Oregon State play UNLV back at uh, Boyd Stadium before they played in the Legion, where they play now where the Raiders are. Uh, Florida, you do worry a little bit more about this trip for the Gators. I don't think it's necessarily a letdown spot for either team. I think both teams probably had aspirations to play later in the bowl season. But I think the Las Vegas Bowl is a pretty good reward uh, Florida six and six straight up. You know they were lucky to get to a bowl, although they were six and four until the last couple losses. So they had already kind of locked it up, and you almost wonder if that's why they lost to Vanderbilt as a two touchdown favorite because the game didn't really mean much once they got that sixth win the week before against South Carolina. And by the way, that thirty eight six win against the Gamecocks is looking pretty darn good now after South Carolina eliminated two playoff teams in back to back weeks after that. Um, you also wonder if Florida was looking ahead to the Florida State game. you know. So that was a bad sandwich spot against Vandy. But it shows if the Gators aren't focused that they can lose. But then again, that South Carolina win shows they can beat anyone. Um, we've seen some money coming in Oregon State on this one, to say the least. Uh, this is a situation where the opening line was 5.5. It's now 11. So that is, once again, the player personnel issues that you talked about being priced into the number. I will say this, though, long-term, if you play double-digit dogs in these minor bowl games, you've made money. And there again, that's just because a lot of times the better team, the favorite, isn't interested. I just wonder, though, is Oregon State really that much of a favorite? Are they really the better team? Will they take their foot off the gas? So we'll see how this plays out. We'll keep an eye on as we get closer to kickoff. But big line move here, 5.5 up to 11. Total has not moved much. Uh, well, it's dropped a little bit, 55.5 down to 51. So... You know, we've seen some money go against Florida and their offense, basically, with some of this indecisiveness from their roster. Folks, check out uh, what we've got available for you on a Patreon. Go to patreon.com, search Mark Rogers TV. You join the Discord. That gets you a link to where you can join the chat room and talk college football with the Knuckleheads 24-7, 365. You get Steve's under-the-radar selection, which we will highlight a little bit later in the bowl season, a number of those coming up. But throughout the regular season, 12 and 1, highlighted by a Troy cover on conference championship weekend. So, Steve, 12 and 1 against the spread in his under the radar selection. Steve, we always appreciate it. Thanks, Mark.